being able to debug code efficiently is an absolute game changer, whether you're developing in Dart or any other language. Now we have a whole video about how to debug using DevTools, but in this video, I want to focus on the actual IDE tools that are provided like breakpoints and stack trace. I use those two more than anything else, definitely more than I've used DevTools. So let's take a look. Hey friends, my name is Tadis and on this channel we go over development topics, especially with Flutter. And in this video, we're going to cover debugging using breakpoints and stack trace. Before we get into those two topics, we need to understand how code execution works. That's going to be a key part of today's lesson. The code execution is the way your compiler or your program steps through the code whenever you are actually running it. So I have two example functions here. Let's pretend the function one gets called and let's step through exactly how this code will work. So first something we'll call function one and then you'll step into this function. It'll go to the first line of code. they will go to the second line of code, which is function two. It means we'll go all the way to function two then run through this, do this, and then back to this print. And then whatever this returns to, it will go back to wherever it came from over here. So basically what your code does, it goes line by line, it does that specific function, if it goes to another function, it jumps to that one, then comes back, and we'll see this in action later in the code. Now, why do I want to explain what code execution is and how it works? Because for a topic of breakpoints, it becomes a very key thing to understand. So with breakpoints, you're actually able to stop the code at a specific place that you define. Let's say we set a breakpoint on this dot. That means your code will go into function one. That will step to the first line and just stop right there. Since there's a breakpoint there, you'll get all the data that you have at that point in the app, and you'll be able to manually step through the code. So there are options to either stop step through, step over, and stuff like that. So step through means you'll go in here and then you click step through again. That means it'll take you to this and it gives you full control of exactly what's going on in the program. It's very useful because you can see all the values update and catch the exact point where stuff happens that maybe you didn't want to happen. Now, another thing about breakpoints is you don't really need to do stuff like this if you're doing it for development, of course, if this is actually meant to be in production, which doesn't really make too much sense. But if you're just doing this for development purposes to figure out what values there are here, it's completely unnecessary when you have breakpoints. So instead of trying to print your console, you can set a breakpoint here and you'll get all the variables and the values for them displayed for you automatically. And the last concept is a stack trace and a stack trace basically shows you in text the call execution that actually happens. So in this case, if we go from here to function two, to that to that and then back here in our stack trace we will see three six five four two one and i'll basically say the last thing that was executed is line three right here then the one before that was here 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 and that way so a stack trace go for, goes from the most recent execution to the oldest execution and this type of stuff happens whenever you have a breakpoint you can see the stack trace or whenever you have an exception it'll show a stack trace as well so it's easy to debug where the actual code came from and how you got into this situation where you have an exception all right now let's show this off with some code in the ide all right, so the code here is super simple. We just have a material app with the home screen and inside the home screen, we have two columns. First column says like this, just a simple text. And the second column is just a button. Now we're gonna take a look at the second column. So the button, if you click it, this like variable turns to true. Click it again, goes back to false and just displays like that. So super simple. Now breakpoints and stack trace and all that stuff is very similar throughout all the IDEs. We're obviously using VS Code, but it works the same way across all of them. So to set a breakpoint, you will click right here and get a red dot. You notice if we refresh the app, nothing happens here because this line of execution only happens whenever we press the button. Let's press it. Our code stops. We can bring up the side panel and go to this debugging window down here where we get shown all our breakpoints and we can even select in VS Code whether we want exceptions to throw a breakpoint or not. So in VS Code we'll get this window. So you'll see there's variables and locals and we have the this. So this I'm assuming is the whole second column widget in here. We can find variables that we need. There's a lot of other stuff in here. Most of it you will probably not need to use, but we have our liked variable right here. You'll notice it is false at first. If we run our code, let's click it again. Now it's true. So it's true because it's before it actually got set here. So we can iterate through it. We can click step into, it'll go to our set state and it'll go through all that, go through some flutter code. We don't need to really understand this. And there we come back. It ran whatever set state flutter code there is and goes into the next line. So this next line sets liked equal to not like. So see when we click this, boom, 
it gets set to false. So we can see the exact point where this got updated and really understand the code a little bit better. There we go with breakpoints. You walk it through, you'll get a much better understanding of how your code executes. But sometimes you forget that it has to jump into some specific function to actually do stuff. But the next thing we get with breakpoints is the actual call stack, so, or as I called it, stack trace, but you can call it different things. I think technically the call stack is whenever you're in a breakpoint, so it just shows you the call stack right there. But a stack trace pops out whenever you have an exception. I could be wrong on that, just whatever. It's very similar. So you'll see over here, we have second column state dot update like means we're in the second column state, which is this and inside the function update like. And if you remember when we were stepping through, it stepped into the set state. This is where we were in the code. So update like is where we are currently. Literally the step before it, we were in the set state function. And then if you remember the step before that, we were back in the update like right here. So their call stack shows you exactly where the code was and how it got to this part that we are at now, which is at the end of the set state. And you can look through. So we have our response state of handle tap. This happened whenever we press this. We have our gesture recognizer. And this is all pretty much just flutter code. So it happens in the background whenever you click the icon button. But yeah, this stack trace is very useful whenever you need it. So let's run this code again. And I'm gonna add some exception code so that you can see how it works with exceptions and how I debug exceptions. So, all right, very similar function. And I actually will walk through this as well to give you an example of how it jumps to different functions. Functions, but we added a function called potential exception. So this calls the random class, which is provided by Dart Math, and gets the next bool, which either gives you a zero or a one. So we have a 50% chance of throwing an exception. So let's click this button and see what happens. And boom, there we go. We have an exception that has been thrown. So you'll see we get a very similar stack trace that we got in the debug window. And once again, we can click into it like we did with the last one. You click this and you're like, oh, okay. So this is the exception that got thrown. And you're like, where did this exception come from? How did we get called into this function? Like this one, you're like, oh, okay. So it happened in this update like function. In normal code, there could be multiple places where a function gets called from. So this is super useful. And then all this got executed using the inkwell or gesture recognizer. So this is again, flutter code. You'll probably mostly use the stuff where it's your own package. Whenever you see your own code doing something that breaks, that's the things you want to focus on. Usually flutter code is pretty reliable. So most of your problems will come from these packages, but I focus on where I see my own program. So that's where you're probably doing something wrong and where you can go debug it. Let's set a breakpoint here and let's click this again. The breakpoint throws out and we will have the exact same call stack here as we saw in our exception stack trace. So see here, it happened over here. If we click back, it came from here. So it's all very tied together and can help you debug code much more efficiently. And now the last thing to actually show you how we step through code, let's set a breakpoint at the actual update like function. We click it, we'll get to the update like, we can step into it. You go to the potential exception. You'll see the code steps into line 48 now. Boom, we'll try to get the random bool and we'll go into the function for random, retrieve that Boolean. And in this case, we got false from next bool, but we skipped this exception throw. And then we can get to the set state. So we can kind of step over this function. So it doesn't have to, we don't actually have to go into the actual set state part of this. And we'll see our light is updated to false and there we go. So that's the basics about using breakpoints, code execution, and stack traces or call stacks as you want to call it. These are the main things that I use for debugging. Probably nine times out of 10, I'm able to solve the problem using these two methods. And now that you got a handle on these two, you can do a lot more debugging for more complex issues using dev tools. There's gonna be a card that pops up for a video to the dev tools video. That one's a little bit more complicated than this, but also lets you solve the more complicated issues. But hopefully this video taught you something new. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like, subscribe and hit that bell notification to get more of this glorious content and see you next time.